wrapped in folds of midnight water side by side we sons and daughters we set forth for no king's orders but we'll sail together Sea of Thieves, the arcadey pirate game where your only goal is to amass as much wealth as possible and become a pirate legend. Seriously, that's it. The journey is what's important in Sea of Thieves. The sessions with your friends or strangers that can lead to so many memorable moments. Where you don't actually care how much money or experience you earned that day. All you care about are the good times you had along the way. It's changed a lot since release. So in this video I'm going to cover the basic features as well as some of the newer elements for those considering returning to the game. In Sea of Thieves you sail the ocean looking for treasure by following treasure maps, riddles and a variety of other piratesque means. You and your crew control the ship together, manning the sails, helm, cannons and whatever else may be necessary at the time. It's an incredibly cooperative game. Just make sure someone is keeping an eye on where you're heading. Oh God! When you reach the islands, you'll have to fight off skeletons to reach your goal, and you may even find the odd NPC to talk to. If you're damaged in a fight, you can use food to heal with some good old fashioned video game logic. You can cook food too for better healing effects. Just don't leave it in the pan for too long. Oh for the love of in order to find what you're looking for, you'll need to explore the islands for the various caves and landmarks. Some of these clues require you to carry out specific actions in order to progress. When you find the spot you're looking for, you'll need to dig for your prize. Rowboats can be used to help bring your loot back to the ship. These randomly spawn on beaches and can be attached to your ship. When you have everything, it's time to return to an outpost to sell your stuff. But beware, skeleton ships and other players can intercept you on the way back to safety so try to cash in regularly. You can even do a spot of pirating yourself, and in my experience, it has paid off incredibly well. If you want a more peaceful hobby, you can always take up fishing, and you can get some real hefty catches. There's a whole load of other interesting mechanics that I haven't covered here. It's best to discover them yourselves in game. You've just got to hope you don't end up changing server at a bad time. Oh Christ. There are several new quest types that can result in longer, more dangerous voyages, but with an equally large payout. These payouts can be increased even further by flying the relevant emissary flag. You can purchase the right to fly these flags from the merchants, gold hoarders, or the order of souls. The faction you choose to represent will give you greater monetary and reputational rewards for selling loot to those vendors. The strength of the flag increases as you add loot to your ship, from grade 1 all the way up to grade 5. A higher grade means greater reward. You lose the flag when you lose your ship, or you can sell the flag for a nice kickback when you wish to take it down. There is one other faction however, the Reapers. Players who raise the Reaper flag are out for some PvP action. They're visible to everyone else on the map, and once they reach Reaper grade 5, they can see every other ship with an active emissary flag on their map. So keep an eye out for the Reaper ships beelining towards you, you may be in for a rough time. Thankfully though, players can now be revived by nearby allies, rather than going directly to the ship of the damned. You can still skip the reviver time, if you think it'll get you back in action quicker though. One last new feature, one of the most requested things in the game. More shanties, and a shanty selection wheel to go with them. Excellent. The game uses a minimalist score, only kicking in when you are in danger or you are the danger. 
The music cues make it easy to tell what's going on, and can really help to instill a sense of dread. Most events come with a jingle of some sort, but the shanties are definitely the best aspect of all this. You can spend your trips jamming out to the various shanties together, or you can play your ship off to sea as you burn it down at the end of a long session. The first to start playing takes the lead role and determines the song. So there's a nice variety to each song depending on what instruments are involved and which instrument is taking the lead. You can even use the cannons or explosive barrels as instruments in the 1812 overture for that added authenticity. The rest of the sound design is really good, and you can easily tell what's going on from the various sound effects. It all adds up to a really immersive and well-designed soundboard that fits the game's visual aesthetics perfectly. Sea of Thieves is another game that rocks the cartoony aesthetic with exaggerated characters, stylistic models, a unique skybox, and some spooky skeletons. The ships look fantastic from the nimble sloop all the way up to the chonky galleon. You can change the look of your ship, character, and equipment with cosmetics, which are really the only things to spend your money on. If you really want to scratch that microtransaction itch, however, there are options for all you whales out there. Pets and pet clothes. Most of the people I play with have already purchased one, and honestly, I'm not even mad. They can even dance to the shanties. Just look how cute they are in their little clothes! <clears throat> Damage to the ship looks great, and a sinking ship is a wonderful sight. Uh, kind of. Most of the time. They look amazing when they're on fire. It makes you just want to, uh, I don't know, light a match and just watch it spread. My friends and I like to end a session with a good old fashioned boat burning. It's a great way to finish off a long session. The game does an incredible job at inspiring a sense of mystery and the unknown. Even once you've visited all the islands several times, there's still an eerie sense of uncertainty around every corner. The servers only have around five player ships at once, so you can go for ages without seeing one. But as soon as you spot those sails on the horizon, that fight or flight reaction kicks in. I highly recommend checking it out, and maybe getting back into it if you play it at around release. You can find it on Steam, the Windows Store, and Xbox for PC. It regularly ends up on sale, and it's free with the Xbox Game Pass. It has cross-platform capabilities for PC and Xbox, and it's seamless. It really is a joy, and you'll have countless memories of your times across the seas. Be it in the little sloop, the medium sized brig or the huge galleon together, no matter who you play with, you'll probably find some common ground and have a really good time. Just remember to give your ship a proper send off at the end of every session. I'll leave you with this clip of when we lost a fight with the ghost galleon, but still played our ship down to the murky depths. You can probably tell that I really like that becammed song. The game's kind of put me into a piratey mood, so the next long game might be pyro related in some way, so look out for that. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel. If you're new, I do quick look videos like this mixed together with lengthier video essays of older games. Also, I mentioned this at the end of the last video, but please check out Absurdist Film's Mother Bird series. I'm in a couple of episodes in that. Anyway, see you soon for another long one.